this, this pulling down. You good? I'm not good. Yeah, don't take that much. Hmm. All right, we're going to open up with the Ten Commandments. Go ahead, brother. Shalom, Vasa Israel. Happy Sabbath. <clears throat> and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. <clears throat> Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me and show mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold them guiltless that take his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, Thou shalt not bear fault with thee against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. <laughs> well, you ain't got the glasses. <laughs> Sir, brother. First and foremost, we always like to give praise and honor to the God of Israel, which is Jesus, Amen. our Lord and Savior. Amen. And I want to say happy Sabbath to everybody. Happy Sabbath, bro. That's what I'm talking about. Today, if anybody got in the cell phone, put them on mute or vibrate. Today, we're going to deal with a lesson called uh, preparing for a well, prepare for the economic hurricane. Prepare for the economic hurricane. And the reason why I titled the lesson because it's something that I've been looking at on the news and what's going on in the world, especially dealing with this economy. And Israel is the first people to get affected the most because we're not prepared for the shortages. When I mean shortages, I mean, you got good money coming in, but they inflate the price of gas, food, all this insurance, everything else that's around you. They might give you a raise, but they take and find a way to take it back. But in this time, we need to be disciplined. Disciplined. Cut out a lot of this stuff about going out to eat every day or these bad habits that we have or, you know, because we don't know what these people are going to do on our jobs. They can furlough you on your job. I remember one year when Obama was in office, they started furloughing people of their, uh, of their days. They had them going to work, but they wasn't getting paid for it. So these things that Israel need to know, because if they don't know them, they're not prepared. If they're not prepared, they do crazy stuff like steal, <laughs> like kill. With all this frustration going on in the world, people are so hyper emotional just because something they can't get. So we got to make sure that we prepare for this famine, but the world call it an uh, economic hurricane. And we're going to look at a video by the CEO of JP Morgan. He heads up the World Banks that's inside uh, the United States. And he's telling the people to make sure they understand this, put something aside. You know, get, get the understanding of what's going on. But I'm going to play the short video so you can see if, if it plays. This is CEO of JP Morgan. Georgia Power has invested nearly $10 billion to strengthen the electric grid, install new 
substations, upgrading transformers, and moving lives underground. We're making the electric grid more resilient and reliable. So they'll make these smart investments today. Go ahead and sit over there, call that stuff over there. Yeah, I want that to come loose. Right up there, down the road, coming our way. We just don't know if it's a minor one or super strong sand. But this is the head of J.P. Morgan Bank, one of the largest banks in the world, and he's talking about, you know, what's about this economics or a famine in the land, as the Bible preaches about, tells us about. But listen, to what he says. Oh, I went back too far. Sorry about that. Hurricane is right out there, down the road, coming our way. We just don't know if it's a minor one or super storm Sandy. The head of J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Dimon, is also warning of an economic hurricane. He points to a number of factors, everything from Fed policies to the war in Ukraine. Dimon says the banking company is positioning its balance sheet very conservatively in case a recession occurs and encourages you to brace yourself as well. So what does that mean? Bobby Rebell is a personal finance expert at Tally and the author of Launching Financial Grown-Ups. Thanks for joining us. So you're a certified financial planner. So can you give us some tips, you know, to help us brace for this, what they're calling an economic storm? Walk us through it. Well, first of all, thank you so much for having me again. Thank you for highlighting this important topic that so many people are concerned about. The first thing I want everyone to do is look at what you have in terms of your emergency fund. Many people did dip into them as we've gone through this pandemic. So be honest, you have three to six months of of money there in case you do have an emergency, both which this could be. Most of us don't. So sure enough, and what you can take to encourage you is the fact that interest rates are going up. That means the rate you're going to get on savings is also going up. Another thing you want to take a close look at is your debt. Your high interest debt should be your priority, things like credit card debt, because those interest rates are getting higher. If you can't pay your full bill on time, pay the minimum payment on time. I'm telling you guys this for a really important reason. So listen closely. You want to maintain your credit rating. You want your credit score to be as high as possible so that you can qualify for a personal, for a line of credit if you need be. You can use services like the app Tally, which can help you get a lower line, lower interest rate on that line of credit. You're going to get the best line of credit from an app like Tally if you have that higher credit rating, your higher credit score. So make sure you are not late with any of those credit card payments and really pay attention to that credit card debt and then any other high interest debt that you have. I know you recommend building an emergency fund, but a new study actually found that the majority of Americans are living paycheck to pay paycheck. So what do you advise them to do in a case like this? This is so hard and yet it's so real. And the hard thing to do is really make some tough decisions. We talk all the time about, oh, you know, cut back on things that are unnecessary. And we know to go through our bills and, and pair back on little things. Maybe now to prepare for an economic hurricane like we're talking about, start thinking about some tough decisions. Maybe we're looking at gas and insurance and all that. Maybe you cut back on having one less car and it's not going to be convenient, but maybe you can do a little jiggling with the schedule and a little more carpooling. Maybe you really pull back a lot on those streaming services. Remember, a lot of our libraries give us media for free. Make some tough decisions. Another thing you can do is really up your revenue, up your income stream. So think about ways that not only asking for a raise at work, maybe the side hustle, maybe members of your family, uh, maybe your older kids. I wrote a book on launching financial products. Kids can get involved. Maybe your children are old enough to start taking on jobs that are just appropriate for their age and start contributing. So start looking not just what you can cut, making those tough decisions, but also ways to increase that income and make life a little more. That's good. But this is the reason why I brought this lesson to, to us today. You turn the camera around. Brought this lesson up today because most of Israel are not thinking about this. And then we are the ones that are in the lines asking for help, asking for money to pay our rent, pay our lights and all this stuff. But God give us an opportunity before the storm hit or before the famine hit to prepare. And we're going to look at some examples of that. As, of me, as for me as a pastor, I got to warn the house of Israel before this come. We're going to have many more of these economic hurricanes or these families in the land. But we need to have the discipline to understand how to save and what to save. Not to splurge 
on a lot of stuff. A lot of people want to splurge because they feel a certain way. It ain't time to splurge. If you can't afford to go out to eat, save that money. Save it. Don't be looking at, oh, bro got me. Oh, sis got me. Oh, who got me? No, no. It's your responsibility as an individual to make sure you got you and your family. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And this is not just an attack on anybody. We all got to do better because even I had to start doing better, checking my, my balance sheets and all this stuff. So this is why I prompt this lesson. But let's get into it. Let's go into Ezekiel chapter 33. Ezekiel chapter 33 and 1. Because if you're not a watchman, a watchman got to show these people what's going on, or God going to hold us responsible. A lot of times people think this is all, all talking about spiritual stuff. Oh, it got some practical stuff in there too. Practical stuff that you had to be in the world, but not of the world. You got to know how to maneuver in the world. And we're going to deal with a lot of that and try to give you certain steps that you can take to help yourself. You know, we all here to help each other, but help yourself first. Help yourself. Ezekiel chapter 31, 33, excuse me, verse 1. When you get it, brother, go ahead. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people and say unto them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman. See, the man of their coast should be the preacher. If he's reading the book, he should make you understand what's about to hit the land. You are watchmen always paying attention to everything. And a lot of times people think, oh, you just being so judgmental. No, no. It's my job and whoever pastor, whoever's a leader, whoever in Israel, you're supposed to warn the people. You can be a watchman too. Because we all got to watch each other backs in this time. Instead of letting somebody else watch our back, don't care nothing about us. But go ahead. Verse 3, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. See, I'm there watching. I'm blowing the trumpet to warn the people. Save. Stop splurging. Find out what's going inside your account and what's going outside your account. Find out your debt ratio and how you spend your money. Because you just can't spend money frivolously and think, oh, well, I get it back. I get it back. No, 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 it don't work like that. Your check going to be the same every month, every week, unless you're in business for yourself. And it's still that fluctuates. So we got to make sure that we get disciplined in those areas as Israel so we won't be in these lines. But you know how we are. Go ahead. Verse 4. Then whosoever heareth the sword, the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword can't come, and then and take, I'm sorry. Go ahead, sorry. Verse 4. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. So we're giving the trumpet. We deal with many different subjects in the Bible. It ain't just, I'm just dealing with the economics now. You know, we deal with all kinds of sin, but this economics can make you sin even more because people do a lot of strange things for a piece of change. A lot of strange things for a piece of change when they want something. You know what I'm saying? But people got to understand this. I'm blowing the, I'm blowing the horn. I'm blowing the trumpet. Like, hey, pay close attention to your finances. Go ahead. Verse 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning. His blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. So we deal with economic. I'm blowing the trumpet. Now, if you ain't taking the necessary precaution of handling your business, the blood going to be upon you. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it calls you to do, because you didn't prompt yourself, I didn't prompt myself. I got to I gotta make sure I take care of the business of me, too. Go ahead. Verse 6. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity. But his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. See, if I see something that happened in this world, I'm the watchman. If I don't tell you God said, you should have warned them of that. You should have told them about this economic hurricane or this famine that's coming on the land. You should have told them about that. It ain't all about, you know, spiritual stuff, like I said before. We got to deal with this practical stuff. Practical stuff. Dealing with your finances. Dealing with your bills in your house. Dealing with all this stuff. It's not just going to go away. <laughs> and more people thought when they got this, this extended rent, 
this extended light bill. It didn't just go away. These people said, okay, we extended you, but we want our money for this rent, for these lights, or for this mortgage. We want it. So the watchman job is to tell you. Go ahead. Verse 7. So thou, O son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Yes, sir. Therefore thou shalt hear the word in my mouth and warn them from me. Warn them from who? From me, from the Lord. The Lord bringing this famine. Understand that. Can't nothing come about building this land unless the Lord allows it. And sometimes he allows famine, destruction, just to get us to start recognize who he control. He's in control. This is what he's saying. But we're going to give you an example that we finished with that seven. Yes, sir. We're going to give you an example of, uh, let's go to Genesis chapter 41. Let's see a good example of a Hebrew watchman who saved Egypt. And it's still going on. These pharaohs, they looking for people to help them what we should do. That's a pharaoh right now. The Gentiles running this thing right now. He getting his information about what's going on in this land. He telling people, hey, we need to figure this out. J.P. Morgan, CEO of the bank. They run all this money. So the white job, just like the Pharaoh, he got to he gonna have a dream from God. He didn't understand what's going on. And we're gonna show you that how Israel, which is the watchman, saved the whole land of Egypt through Joseph. Genesis chapter 41, we're gonna start with verse one. Go ahead. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. So Pharaoh had this dream for two full years about what's about to happen to his land. God put it on his mind. God controlled the minds of the pharaohs, the kings. He put stuff in there so they will understand what to do. But he didn't understand what his dream was and what it means. Go ahead. Verse 2. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kind and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. Go ahead. And behold, seven other kind came up after them out of the river, ill-favored and lean-fleshed, and stood by the other kind upon the brink of the river. So he got seven good beasts and seven lean beasts, ill beasts. He like, man, what is he talking about? What is he talking about? Keep going. We're going to get an interpretation of this. Go ahead. Verse 4. And the ill-favored and lean flesh kind did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kind. So Pharaoh awoke. So he awoke from his dream. Like, what's going on? The ill-favored uh, kind ate up the good kind. But all this is meaning of economics or famine. In Egypt. Go ahead. Verse 5. And he slept and dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good. That's okay. You ain't get it that time with the seven lean. I'm going to give you corn. Here's a corn. Go ahead. Read on that. Read on through. Mm -hmm. Verse 6. And behold, seven thin ears and blasted with the east wind sprung up after them. Yes, sir. And the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. So God is plaguing his mind. He getting on his mind, telling him what's about to happen to his land. And he don't understand it. So he's going to call some people. Go ahead. Verse 8. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. And he sent and called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof. And Pharaoh told them his dream. But there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Ain't none that can interpret it. It's certain job for the Israelite. God, that's the protocol. God, the father give it to the son. The son give it to the Israelite. You can't break the chain. In order for you to understand what's going on in this world, Israel got to show you. Go ahead. Verse 9. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants and put me in ward in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. So this is when Joseph was in prison for 13 years. He went in there at 17. And he was in there for 13, equal up to 30. But he telling, he remembers somebody who told him his dream. Because when Pharaoh get mad, you ain't taking care of your business, which is telling him what he needs to know. He started killing. So he had to find somebody. And chief said, hey, hey, I remember somebody. And he started thinking about this Hebrew. Go ahead. Verse 11. And we dreamed a dream in one night. 
I and he, we dreamed each man according to the interpretation of his dream. Yes, sir. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard. And we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream, he did interpret. So he interpreted that the butler was going to go back to Pharaoh. And he said the other guy, the baker, he was going to die in three days. So he told him, his dream came through, he remembered that. And he was telling Pharaoh, let's see how Pharaoh responded. Go ahead. 13. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. So he restored him back to being the butler in Pharaoh's house, and he hung and killed the uh, baker. Go ahead. Verse 14, then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself and changed his raiment and came in unto Pharaoh. Now, Joseph was sold into slavery by his brothers first to the Ishmaelites, and then he went to Potiphar's house. Then Potiphar, you know what happened with him and his, his wife, and they sold it and put him in slave for 13 years. So he waited 13 years for this time right here. That's what people don't understand. When God puts you in position, it going to take a little waiting and faith. He waited 13 years, but while he was waiting, he became captain in the of the guards inside the prison. Your gift will work anywhere. You just got to wait to your timing. But this is what he did for Pharaoh in this economic famine. Go ahead. Verse 15. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. Yes, sir. Go ahead. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. He said and told him right there, It is not in him. God shall give Pharaoh the peace. He shall give Pharaoh the peace. Mm -hmm. But we got to understand this that, got to head on back to the back. We got to understand that God makes sure that the Israelite is the one that's going to be in position. To help the land. But if Israel not in position and just get lax on their understanding what they're supposed to do, they will lose their position. But he said, I'm not going to tell you, right. but God going to tell you. He put it in God. Had. God had to tell Joseph what was going on in the land with those seven ill kind and several and them seven good kind of animals and ears of corn. Jump now, we did with the 17. No, we didn't. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph in my dream, behold, I stood upon the bank of the river. So he started telling the dream all the way over again. Let's jump down to verse 25. Verse 25. Go ahead, bro. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream of Pharaoh is one. God has showed Pharaoh what he is about to do. So he's telling the dream, the interpretation from God, not from Joseph. Go ahead. The seven good kind are seven years. And the seven good ears are seven years. The dream is one. So he tell them those ears and those, ear, ear, those, those uh, animals are seven good years. Seven good years. Go ahead. Verse 27. And the seven thin and ill-favored kind that came up after them are seven years. And the seven empty ears blasted with the east wind shall be seven years of famine. He tell them you're going to have seven good years of plenty. Seven good years of plenty. But the next seven going to be famine. That's why I'm showing y'all about J.P. Morgan, the CEO of the banks. Mm. And this is J.P. Morgan right here, which is Pharaoh. He's the one controlling this land. He got to put people in position so Egypt won't die off and suffer so bad. So he called Joseph the Hebrew to interpret this dream. Right. Go ahead, bro. 28. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showeth unto Pharaoh. Well, who's about to do? God. God. So it's, if it's a famine or economic crisis in this land, God allows it. He allows it. Mainly to put Israel back in the right spots. Sometimes when you have an economic crisis, Israel get a little more than what they should get. We know about this stimulus. Right. All this stuff that's going on. Right. And sometimes that will make Israel sorry. So we got to make sure we be careful of that. Most Israel have spent all their money from the stimulus still are saving it. You're right, bro. This is what we're trying to make sure we understand how to be disciplined in this economic hurricane or this famine through these examples of Joseph and the Pharaoh.
Keep going. Verse 29. Behold, there come seven years of great plenty throughout all the land of Egypt. Yes, sir. And there shall arise after them seven years of famine. And all the plenty shall be forgotten in the land of Egypt. And the famine shall consume the land. You see what he said? All the good years. People love to forget when it's good. They spin and spin and spin and spin and spin it. Instead of thinking about, oh, one day I might not have it. It might be a shortage. That's Israel's problem. You got to make sure you be disciplined to put some aside. I don't care if five, ten, twenty dollars aside. So when something pop up on you, it just don't derail your whole bank account. But keep going. Verse 31. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following. See what he said? The plenty shall not be known. Because we get lax when we got a lot of food, a lot of money. They think, oh, it's going to be like this all the time. Shoot, sure, we good. I'm waiting on another stimulus check. We good. That's what's going on now. But this man said it's going to be an economic hurricane coming. I'm just going by the, the Gentile who's in charge. They in charge now. We're not in charge. Go ahead. 31. And the plenty shall not be known in the land by reason of that famine following. Yes, sir. For it shall be very grievous. Very grievous. Go ahead. And for that the dream was doubled unto Pharaoh twice. It is because the thing is established by God and God will shortly bring it to pass. Established by who? By God. God. He going to bring it to pass. Right. This is what, I'm, this is what we are trying to establish in, on, in this land now so we can understand that prepare and he's going to tell Joseph how to do it. Go ahead. Verse 33. Now, therefore, let Pharaoh look out a man discreet and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Can somebody look you out in the land to be discreet and wise into the land of Egypt? If you going, what you got going on, mm. come on in, bro. This is what God telling us right here. Mm. Find a man in Israel who can take you from this famine. And he's going to find the Hebrew. And this is what the Hebrew said, which is Joseph. Go ahead. Verse 34. Let Pharaoh do this and let him appoint officers over the land and take up the fifth part of the land of Egypt in the seven plenteous years. So he's telling you in the seven plenteous years, take up the fifth part. What is that? Saving. He's saving a portion of the crops. Right. Mm -hmm. With Genesis 41. Mm -hmm. Saving a portion of the crop called God already revealed it's going to be an economic hurricane. Right. It's going to be an economic famine that's coming about. It's going to happen in our day. I'm just showing you the example of how we handled it back in the day. So we can build this discipline as Israel. Keep going, bro. Genesis 41 and verse 35. Go ahead. And, and let them gather all the food of those good years that come and lay up corn under the hand of Pharaoh and let them keep food in the cities. So you got to make sure you get your deep freezer. Go get you some corn. Go get you some peas. Y'all remember how the mama and used to make them, share them peas and put them in the freezer for the, for the winter? Right. All that stuff. Yep. But we done got so fancy now, we think, oh, we can go to the store. Yeah, you can go to the store, but gas is $5 now. Food is high now. You can't go to the store, but too many times your check ain't changed. My check ain't changed. I don't go out to eat but one time a week. <laughs> That's it. I'm going home and cook. Right. This is what he's telling us here. Discipline. Go ahead. Verse 36. And that food shall be for store to the land against the seven years of famine, which shall be in the land of Egypt, that the land perish not through the famine. He says, so the land won't perish. This is not before us. So we won't perish. These are our examples. When they bring this famine on the land, like I said, J.P. Morgan CB, CEO said this. He's like, it's going to be an economic hurricane. Get ready for it. We're already seeing it right now. People are losing $40,000 in their stocks, their retirement plan, the 401k plan. I know about all this stuff. Nobody at all. But my faith is not in it. Most people are trying to retire now, but they can't retire now because they know you have a dip in their stock. Oh, I got to take it another year. I got to take it two more years now. So it's going to dip a lot. These systems are not designed for us to mm. retire. They're not. They want to keep you a slave as long as they can. They want to keep you there. But we're just looking at examples of how to get out this famine, where survive this famine. Go ahead, bro. Verse 37. And the thing was good in the eyes of Pharaoh and in the eyes of all his servants. It was good. Right. Because God is working through Joseph. Right. The Israelite. Mm -hmm. He gave him the answers. Mm -hmm. 
And that's why I'm telling you all, get people the answers. And we're going to show you how you can prosper through the recession, through the recession. But you got to have a plan. I got to have a plan. I got my plan. I understand. I'm going to make sure y'all understand. Go ahead, bro. Verse 38. And Pharaoh said unto his servants, can we find such a one as this is, a man in whom the spirit of God is? Go ahead. He like, man, we can't find nobody better than Joseph. Go ahead. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, for as much as God has showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Nobody wise and discreet as them. He saved Egypt through the hands of God with that saving a fifth part of each year to get over this economic hurricane mm. to make us understand in our day. This is what else happened. So when you working for God, understand Joseph was in jail for 13 years right. for nothing, for a lie. But God raised him up. Let me show you how he raised him up. Go ahead. Verse 40. Thou shalt be over my house, and according to thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. Joseph went from zero to 100. He got it out of the mud, as they say. He went from second in charge on the Pharaoh. All because what? He didn't lose track of what God gave him, which is his gift. You got to figure out what your gift is. I know what my gift is, and we got to work it. Listen what else he says. Go ahead. 41. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, see, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. He set him over all the land of Egypt. Coming from a jail cell to that. That's power. Can't nobody do that but God. Let's look at some more stuff. Let's go to Luke chapter 14. Like I said, the title of the lesson is prepare for the economic hurricane. Prepare for it because we are going into a recession. Or we are going into a famine. In Israel, or the so-called Negroes are the ones that are affected the most because we don't take no type of preparation for this. We think we can go to the store. We think we're going to have a job. We think we're going to have money all the time. It's not like that. They didn't show us too many times. Let's see how we can individually survive this economic hurricane. Luke chapter 14. We're going to start with verse 28. Just give you some little, little tidbits from the book. Luke 14, verse 28. When you get it, brother, go ahead. For which are you intending to build a tower, sit it not down first, and count the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? Let me break this down in layman terms. Which of you go out there and buy a house? Not sitting down, how you going to pay your mortgage? Which of you go out here and buy a rental place and I consider, can you pay for it? This is what he's saying. Make sure you know what you can pay for it. I always tell people this. Bill, if you're a husband and wife, bill your finances are one income. One income. So one of y'all fall off, one of y'all fall lower in, the, lower in that year, y'all can still keep going. And this is what he said. You got to count the cost. I'm going to say it like Jane Bryan. You got to count the cost to be the boss. The boss don't make them stupid decisions by going out there over budget his whole household to the T. You can't do that. Because you can, you can break down. You need, need a transmission. You can need some dealing with your engine, some dealing with your business, or some on the job you can't work and you get hurt. You got to factor all that stuff in. But you got this big mortgage here. You got this big car note. You got the big, big whatever here. And most of all, got big credit card bills here. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. <laughs> Verse 29. Let's happily after he hath laid the foundation and is not able to finish it, all that behold it began to mock him. So you laid the foundation and you ran out of money. You said, man, we were going to go get this house. Man, you telling everybody you about to move in? They're like, hey, Jeff, what happened? Well, stuff just didn't go right, man. Oh, I knew that Negro ain't have no money. That's what they be like. They, they wait for you to fall. Right. Mm -hmm. So you move in silence. You ain't got to tell everybody what you're doing. Move in silence. Get through this economic hurricane. This famine in the land because it's coming. It's coming. If it don't come, you got plenty of money. You got plenty of money. Go ahead, bro. Verse 30, saying, this man began to build and was not able to finish. Because they're going to talk about you. 
cause you to make good decisions on what you're doing, not because of what your paycheck showing. You made it because you thought what you going to make. You thought you can do it. You thought this person going to help you and they help you. You got to factor all that stuff in, in this economy. You got to. That's, that's one step. Let's look at another step. Let's go to Luke chapter 16. Let's see another level, how to survive this economic hurricane. Luke 16 and 9. Luke 16 and 9. Because it's coming. We just experienced one with COVID. <laughs> we should be familiar with this stuff. And who in the line? Israel. But it was a lot of the white folks in line too this time too. <laughs> a lot of them lost their businesses and their houses and all that. Because when this market get to fluctuating, if you ain't got a locked in interest rate in your house, they can balloon your house down. You can be $700 paying this $700 note. If that market, not, your house note is not locked in, they can bloom it up to $1,400. But you budget for 700 so you got two things to do. You're going to leave or cut it down. Luke 16 to 9. Let's look at another level. How to survive this hurricane. Go ahead, brother. And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that when you fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. What is that? Make you a friend of mammon. Mammon means money of unrighteousness. Them banks. Make sure your credit is straight. Make sure you have a line of credit. You can have credit cards. As long as your credit is straight, when that economic uh, crisis hit, you can go charge some stuff and get you to the next week. Just enough to get you some gas money to get to work. Just enough for you can get you some food in your refrigerator. Just enough. But you know what we do? Oh, man, I'm going on vacation. Sure, I got all this money right here. I'm going to Aruba. I'm going to Aruba. I'm going to go for I'm going to... Down there in uh, Destiny, where in the closest beach? Destiny, yeah. They got good blue water down there. You see some of, you know Israelites ain't had this money. I'm looking at all these little fraudulent businesses that done started on the stimulus sheet. I'm like, man, what, what, what shot they have? And they started these business getting this money. They cracking down on them now. They cracking down on them. He said, make friends with the unrighteous mammon. These folks in the bank are unrighteous, but you make friends with them. It's not righteous for a banker to have you in debt 30 years for a house. The same amount it costs you to buy a car. He got you 30 years for a $90,000 loan. It's going to take you 30 years. You pay for the house three times. But it comes to a depreciated value of a car, $90,000. Oh, six years, you're done. What sense is that? It's not designed for you to get out of it. But he telling you, make friends with him, you might have to need him. Go ahead, bro. Verse 10, he that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much. And he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much. And that shows. How many of us got credit cards and ran them up when they got in college? <laughs> How many of us got student loan knowing they need no student loan? Me. Mm -hmm. yeah. How many of us still paying them student loan back? Me, this is what I'm trying to tell you. If we don't have these, these, these uh, levels of, of understanding how to work this out, it's going to take us under. Then we're going to start sinning, trying to get on top, stealing, <laughs> selling your body, all this stuff going down in this economic crisis. Go ahead, bro. Verse, verse 11, if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Because nobody can't give you nothing when you can't maintain your own house. You can't maintain a car. I don't want a new car. The car you got not dirty. You won't even put new tires on it. How you going to get a new car? Mm. Yeah, that's the true, house bro. you got dirty. You want a new car. You want a new house. You ain't maintaining it. That's true, bro. Who gonna make you manager over the company when you when you when you skimming time off the clock? Mm -hmm. You're right. Having your homeboy clock you in when you get in there. You're right. They looking at all this stuff. Yep. They're true rich. Who gonna put you over anything? Go ahead, bro. Verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's, who should give you that which is your own? Yes, sir. You ain't been faithful over another man's riches. Who gonna give you your own? 
I mean, I work for this guy before I nope. open up my barbershop. I could just use myself as an example. I did what he told me to do. I did exactly what he told me to do. And he said, okay. And he did a lot for it because he saw I was genuine about his business. I made sure I did exactly what he said with no lip. Because he was the boss. I respect authority. If you're in an authoritarian position, I'm going to respect that. But most people, they don't know how to respect authority, but they want to be the boss. God put certain people in charge for a reason because he know you and me going to slack off. He looking for that person going to be disciplined. Disciplined. We finished with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Luke chapter 12, verse 42. We got to make sure in these times, clean up that credit history. When you got this stimulus money, clean that credit history up. Establish some credit. You might need it. Learn the discipline of that. Luke chapter 12, verse 42. See, a lot of times God give us stuff and put us up position. He checking to see if he's going to run it right. He checking to see, okay, I gave him that. Let me see what he's going to do with it. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Luke chapter 12, verse 42. Let me get the brother go ahead. And the Lord said, who then is that faithful and wise steward who's his Lord, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household to give them their portion of meat in due season? So God looking at the steward who he gives something to manage. To handle in the world. He's trying to see how you benefit in the kingdom. Not just for your sake, your own lustful thing that you want. But most people just want to consume all this money on their lustful stuff. It ain't got to be bad lust. You know, you might like shoes. You like clothes. You like cars. You like housing. But you don't like giving nothing to God. You don't like do nothing for him. He checking this. Let me show him to keep going. Verse 43. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he coming, shall find so doing. Find him doing what? Find him doing what? He give you and I a portion of finance. He give you a portion of skills. What are your skills and how you benefit the kingdom with it? What are you doing? I lose, use myself for an example. I got a barbershop. He give me the ability to cut hair. We start the church here. And we're going to move from the barbershop into a building. He gave me this. This is what I'm doing. I'm doing the best I can. But this is what, what you doing. He going to find you doing something with the money, whatever he gives you, the position. He want to find you doing something. We're just developing skills and discipline here, how God wants us to do it. Go ahead, bro. 44. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he had. So what they're telling him, God watch it. When he get back, he said, oh, okay. I gave you 40,000, you gave me 10. Or I gave you 40,000, you gave me 4. Or you did what you're supposed to do with the money I had given you. You helped the king. You, you ain't have no money. You gave what you had. It's not up to me to see what you got or what you're doing. It's up to God. God see you as an individual. I don't even worry about nobody what they give. <laughs> Y'all know me. I rarely even talk about money. That ain't my business. That's between you and the Lord. <laughs> yes, sir. Keep going. 45. But and if that servant say in his heart. Check my... this out now. He said, but if that servant. See, God done bless. God done bless you with something. He's trying to see if you're going to do it. He's going to find the heart. In his heart, meaning his mind. Listen to what God said right here. Go ahead. But and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. And this is what he's saying. Oh, God ain't coming back. Now I got time. I got time to get all this pleasure in this sinful world. I can turn just at the drop of a dime like that thief on the cross. Oh, he got right. salvation at the end. You're I can right, turn. Right. But Joker, you might not be in that mindset. Your mind, God might turn your mind reprobate because you think you premeditating God. We don't want to premeditate, premeditate him now. Oh, I got time. Shoot, I'm 30 years old. I'm going to get out here and do my thing, then I'll repent. See, that's the, that's the hard part right there. You know and I know what you're supposed to be doing, but you don't get caught it. in your sin. Mm -hmm. Start at the top. Go ahead, bro. But and if that servant say in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming and shall begin to beat the men, servants, and maidens, and to eat and drink, and to be drunken. Now he started abusing. 
what God give him to manage. I don't care if it's money. I don't care if it's possessions or anything. He started abusing this stuff. He started abusing this stuff and he started beating the servants. You know how some people, they get on top, oh, I'm the boss. You got to do what I say. Be in my house at 12 o'clock. Then you get a raise. Beating your servants. You got these preachers inside these churches sleeping around with these women. Beating their servants. He ain't just talking about literally you got to fight them. He be you using God's word wrong, sinfully. I'm using that example. He giving you something. Go ahead, bro. 46. The Lord of that servant will come in a day when he looketh not for him and at an hour when he is not aware. So and I told you. He coming a day when he ain't aware. He thinking he got time. She thinking he got time. No, the time is now to turn from it. What God going to do to him? Go ahead. And will cut him in asunder and will appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Where is that? The lake of fire. So he came while you was on top of something. And you lost your life while you was on top of something. I had an uncle who had experienced that. If you know what I mean. He was in this sinful mode. He died in his sin. You can't do that. I'm telling you, don't premeditate nothing with God. Do the best you can. We just understand how to survive in this economy so he can help us. Go ahead, brother. 47. And that servant which knew his Lord's will. Wait a minute. He said that servant that what? That knew his Lord's will. So you know it. This ain't talking about a servant that don't know it. This is when you start premeditating stuff think like you smarter than God. When I think I'm premeditating, so I think I'm smart in the God. So God said, okay, I'm going to wait till you get right there and hit it. Bow! Well, he can't recover. Don't be, don't be that way. We read these examples so we can get his help, not his hurt. Go ahead, bro. 47. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. You're going to be beaten with many stripes. And sometimes them beatings start while you're in the flesh. Your mind become reprobate. You got a lot of people have lost their faith and walked away from this. Saying that y'all doing too much. He don't take all that. You trying to be a, you trying to be a cult leader. I ain't telling nobody to follow me. Y'all rarely hear from me to win. The Sabbath. I ain't, look, I ain't looking for nobody. If you need me, I'm here. I got too much sin that I got to deal with. Period. He said, be beaten with many stripes. Go ahead. 48. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. For unto whomsoever much is given, of him shall be much required. And to whom men have committed much, of him they will ask the more. See, when we learn this, that much is required. When we learn and know this, God said, I taught you, but the servant that really don't know, he ain't going to get beat with many stripes. You and I understand this. We understand it because we listen to this over and over and over and over and over again. That's why it's a dangerous thing to not do when you have heard. Danger, especially when you understand when I understand. In this economic season, we need all this help in this family. We need all this help. So he's telling you in this particular verse right here, he gave us an ability to make whatever we make, many streams of income, whatever it is. Whatever it is that you know how to do, go do it and give it to the Lord. You finished with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Second King. Let me give you an example. Let's check out how we supposed to ask God for a blessing. Second King, chapter three. Second King chapter three, preparing for this economic hurricane or this famine. We get some little understanding on how to survive. And folk thinking, like, thinking about, oh man, we just need some more money. No, you don't. Money complicates things for people. It complicates. If your flesh ain't right, money, riches will destroy you. You got to get this mindset right. I got to get this mindset right. Let's check out what Solomon did before he asked God for a dime. Second Kings chapter three, and verse one. This is an example. 
Go ahead. Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria, the 18th year of Jehoshaphat. No, first king, my first bad. King. First king. Yeah. 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 First king chapter three, my fault. First king chapter three. Let's look at an example how Solomon handled his lifestyle. Let's see what he asked for. That's all of us want to do is ask for things. Second, first Kings chapter three and verse one. That's a typo on the lesson. Go ahead, brother. And Solomon made affinity with Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and took Pharaoh's daughter and brought her into the city of David until he had made an end of building his own house and the house of the Lord and the wall of Jerusalem round about. Go ahead. Only the, play, only the people sacrificed in high places because there was no house built unto the name of the Lord until those days. Remember back in the day, David wanted to build a house for the Lord. He said, no, oh, David, you too blessed. I'm going to let your son do it. And this is what Solomon doing, going to do. But he was placed in a position that he was under a lot. He had a lot of authority, but he didn't understand how to govern that authority. And he's going to show, and I'm just showing you the example of how he came at the Lord. And we should learn something from this. Go ahead. Verse 3. And Solomon loved the Lord, walking in the statutes of David, his father. Only he sacrificed and burned incense in high places. So King David did his job. He taught his kids. Fathers, what you teaching your kids? He walking in the statue. We got a big responsibility as a daddy, as a father. Tell them. That's all you can do. You ain't try to make them because you can't make nobody do nothing. But David... Solomon walked in all the statutes, meaning the laws of God. Go ahead. Verse 4. And the king went to Gibeon to sacrifice there, for that was the great high place. A thousand burnt offerings did Solomon offer upon that altar. So Solomon was following his father, David. He saw offering up sacrifices. This is when you offer up something to God, you're giving your best to him. Remember the story about Cain and Abel? Right. Cain gave. He slapped his second to God, and God didn't honor him. He got mad and killed his brother. But but uh, uh, um, Abel, he gave his best, and he blessed him. And this is what happened now. Solomon giving his best, but God going to come to him and ask him something. Go ahead. Verse 5. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, ask what I shall give thee. See, God saw what he was doing with what he gave him. He said, ask whatever you want. What you want from me? But when you ain't doing, Jack, he ain't going to come and do nothing for you. Go ahead. Verse 6. And Solomon said, thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great oh, mercy. On, check this out. He asked him, he asked him what he wanted him to do for him. But check out what he said to God first. The chat is out. Keep going. And Solomon said, Thou hast showed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth and in righteousness and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. First thing he did, he showed respect. He ran down the lineage of what he did to, for his father. He asked him, give me some money. Give me a lot of wives. Give me all this stuff. No, he started giving respect to God first. That's what we got to understand right here. And listen to what God was seeing. Go ahead. Verse 7. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. And I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. That's what you, you and I should be asking before we get this money. Before we get this position. How are we going to handle it? A lot of people go and file for a job, have people taking tests for them, and then they get the job. They don't know jack about the job. Filling out the application and everything. Don't know nothing about the job. No, they say, I learn when I get on the job. They get fired within 90 days. Go ahead, bro. Listen to what happened here. Go ahead. Verse 8. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. He said, man, I'm in the midst of these people, the Israelites. I got to know how to handle them. I need some knowledge and wisdom to handle them. Not money. 
but he's going to give him something on top of that. Go ahead. Verse 9. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? How many will us ask God for that at the opportunity? Give me a Cadillac. Give me a new house. I want some joys. I want to eat out all the time. First thing they're going to ask God for what they feel they belly. But listen what God said about his response to this. David, Solomon's response. Go ahead. Verse 10. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. He said, please thee. Why? Go ahead. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing and has not asked for thyself long life, neither has asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. This is how you, this is how you survive a economic hurricane or a famine. You get the knowledge of God and he'll show you something that's inside of your house. Something that you possess will make money for you. A lot of people don't think that much of themselves. They don't think they have no talent, no skill. They can't do nothing. They think they go and punch a clock. A lot of us are millionaires and just don't know it. Because that faith is weak. And Solomon was telling God, God was telling Solomon, you please me, man. I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you that and some more. Keep going. Verse 12. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and an understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. Ain't nobody going to be like Solomon. Never will in the future that he was the wisest king ever. Nobody. God gave it to him. Go ahead. 15, I mean 13. Wait, excuse me. Solomon is the Google of our day. If you needed to know something, you go to him. He will tell you everything you need to know. He was just that smart. His memory was just that big because he was dealing with God. Go ahead, brother. 13. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked. Check this out. Go ahead. Both riches and honor, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. So he put some on top of that. Riches and honor. Ooh. So he said, man, you got to get this understanding first so you can handle this money. But in, in this economic crisis, people want all the money. Then they broke before the economic crisis ended. No understanding. <laughs> Go ahead, bro. 14. And if thou will walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David wait, did. Wait, wait a minute now. We going back to them commandments? What did they tell you he son the churches? Hey, that's when Jesus went, died man. on the cross, he nailed the law to the cross. Not so. If it worked for Solomon, it'll work for you. And we're keeping one today, the Sabbath day. And we're going to keep one tomorrow, which is Pentecost. Go ahead, bro. 14. And if thou will walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. Then. Those are some big words. If and then. If and then. So he put a contract on the table to see what you and I are going to do. Walk in these commandments, and then I will bless you. This is how you survive this crisis. Go ahead, bro. 15. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he stood, and he, and he came to Jerusalem and stood before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. Instead of Solomon getting rid, he started giving more. He just start giving more. People don't think like that. You give more to God, you can't be him giving. I can't be him giving. But when you holding on them dead presidents so tight, nothing can get in and nothing can get out your pocket. God trying to get you something, man. He trying to get you something, whoa, man. But you holding on like you're going to miss something. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 4. 2 Kings chapter 4. I want to show some people this because some people think, well, I don't, I don't think I can do it. Just go get another job, Jeff. Mm -hmm. It's something right in your house that you ain't even looking at, right? And God going to show you in this example right here through this woman. People are blinded, man. They blinded. We need God to open our eyes up so we can see what's around us. I mean, back in the day, you'd never catch a white man cutting grass. 
Never cut. All you saw was brother cutting grass. Then that white man said, whoa, I just paid this, this, this Negro $125 to cut my yard. Now you see them all with lawnmower following. He opened his eyes up. Something that's right there you're doing every single day can make you multiple streams of income. But you don't see it. Let's look at an example here. 2 Kings chapter 4 and 1. We need to understand so God can open that vision up. Stop limiting yourself. Verse 1, go ahead. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, Elisha saying, thy, thy servant, my husband, is dead. Yes, sir. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be born me. The creditor coming. Because her husband died. The credit come to take her two sons. That's what they used to do back in the day. I'm going to put your son in slavery till he worked his dead off. So she got a problem. She got a problem. Her husband dead, and she got creditors coming. She needs some money. Well, check out what she petitioned God for. Go ahead. Verse 2. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in thy house? And she said, Thine handmaid has not anything in the house except for a pot of oil. See, see that. What's in your house? What's in your house? That's all you can see. A lot of times, that little small thing that you see, which is a lawnmower, that small thing you see, which is that water hose that you can wash car, that small thing that you see, which is TikTok, which is YouTube, which is Instagram, that small thing you see people making multiple streams of income on. But we just lose this as pleasure. Pleasure. That small thing, she said, I only have a pot of oil. God said, okay, we'll work with that. Okay, go ahead, bro. Verse three, then he said, go, borrow the vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Go borrow something from your neighbors for a while. Maybe you got to borrow their cell phone just to make you a YouTube account. Maybe you got to borrow their cell phone and you make a TikTok account until you get your money. Understand what you're looking at here. This is how you survive an economic crisis because of what you have in your household. The lady said she had nothing but a pot of oil. Let's see what God did with the pot of oil. Go ahead. Verse 4. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out into all those vessels and thou shalt set aside that which is full. Now, when you doing your business, you don't need no haters around you. They're going to knock your faith. Close the door because he didn't want nobody around him but her and her son so God can work. People got to have a whole crowd of people so they can feel like they're doing right. No, uh -uh. them crowd of people you hear whisper, uh, you know, he going to fail. Look at that fool up there. Look how, he's, look, look how stupid he look. And you listening to this stuff in the back of your head and they done knock your face. Oh, man, I guess you're right. Open that door. Let me get out of here. But listen what happened. Go ahead. Verse 5. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons who brought up the vessels to her and she poured out. You got to be, you, sometimes you got to walk this road by yourself and the people that, that believe with you. This is just an example of surviving this economic crisis. Go ahead, bro. Verse 6. And it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more in the, in the oil stain. So she started pouring that oil. And that, as long as whatever that vessel was in, could be, the oil just kept coming, kept coming. You start making them TikTok videos. You got a hunter follow. Then you got 2,000 followers. Then you got 6,000. All of a sudden, you go viral. And now that blue check coming. I'm just using it for an example. You can have this stuff today, but we don't see it like that because our vision is clouded. It's clouded. You limit yourself. Let's see what she did with that oil. Go ahead. Verse 7. Then she came and told the man of God, and he said, Go, sell the oil and pay thy debt, and live thou and thy children of the rest. He said, Go sell it. You got what you need, go sell it. And you can live. He cured her debt with one can of oil that she had. He didn't get that oil from nowhere else, but was in, in her house. You got to find it. That oil can be a whole pipe, a whole lot of water coming out of that whole pipe that you can wash some car with. 
But you know what we say? Oh, it's too hot out there. Mm -hmm. Man, I'm working too hard. You right, bro. It's too hot. That's why a yep. lot of people broke. Yes. Cause they sorry. You right, bro. Sorry. Teach. I get out there, cut grass, wash car, do whatever I need to get me some bread. Right, Believe bro. that. Let me show you why these people don't have what they have in this economic crisis. Let's go to James chapter four. Jesus. Yes, sir. <laughs> we got all this stuff around us, man. That we can't see it. Believe me, it was a lot of businesses that was birthed in the in the COVID crisis. A whole lot of people went and been. They did what was right with that money. But you got a whole lot of dummies out there went on vacation. <laughs> got got calls and they got to turn them back in. Hiding from the repo man. They shutting the car off with a switch. Yep, you're right. That's the truth. <laughs> I be asking, I ain't trying to put nobody on first street, but man, I said, man, you know your car running out there? Yeah, I know. And I thought about it. I said, why you? He said, oh man, I got, I can't turn it off cause <laughs> if I turn it off, they gonna lock the car. Do you not know that you can't go to the gas station, fill that car and run the car all night long? I said, what in the world? Because if they turn their car off, oh, it's locked down, kill switch. Long as it's running, you can drive. Because they can't turn it off. Well, that's food for thought right now. That's what they do, man. They ain't do what right with the money. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yep. Let's go to James chapter oh, 4 and 1. <laughs> now, our lust is out of control, man. It drives us into debt. Now, this is why people don't have what they need right here. James 4 and 1. Go ahead, brother. From whence come wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence, even of your lust, that war in your members? Lust, war in your members. This ain't just talking about sexual lust. It's lusting about all different types of things that you can't afford. You don't need to have. You don't need that BBL. Go ahead. Verse 2. <laughs> Verse 2. You lust and have not. You kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. You fight in war, yet you have not because you ask not. Because you ask not. Go ahead. Verse 3. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss that you may consume it upon your lust. What? This is the reason why you're asking? So you can consume it on your lust. God said, man, I ain't dealing with that. You want to get this money, you want to get this stuff so you can go out there and get you a new car, new house. Ain't nothing wrong with your car right now. You just want to shine. Look what I got. I'm doing good. And you don't even need it. I find my crazy self with that mentality. My brother had to shake me up. He said, boy, you done paid that house out? I said, yeah, man, I think I'm going to go ahead and get me a bigger house. He said, boy, you crazy. He said, man, your kid's gone. It's just you and your wife there. What you going to do with all that house? You going to be like me with a big house. With a whole lot of taxes. Whole lot of upkeep. Stop thinking it like that, man. Get that mentality out your mind. See how you can benefit the kingdom. See how I can benefit the kingdom. Then this stuff won't mean so much to you. Then God said, I can give it to him now. He ain't thinking about it now. He ain't thinking about it. I seen that happen in my life, man. I can only use myself for a testimony. You finished with that? Yes, sir. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 32. Now, we have to be careful with what God give us. Because you know Israel, when we get a little money, a little tighter, but we get real boastful, Man. thick, real fat and thick. Deuteronomy 32 and 9. It's talking about our people, and you're going to actually see our people through this chapter. I'm telling you, money confuses people. Possessions confuses people. They don't need it. That's why most of us don't have it. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy 32 and 9. Let's look at here. Look at what God telling Jacob. Go ahead. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Yes, sir. He found him in the desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. Oh, Jacob was wrestling with what? That angel. 
He said, I'm going to hold on to you until you bless me. And he blessed Jacob, which is Israel, which is the so-called Negro. He blessed him. We are the chosen people. Go ahead. Verse 11. Mm. As an eagle stirreth up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh them, beareth them on her wings, so the Lord alone did lead him, and there was no strange God with him. No strange God with him. He was praising the God of Israel, the God of the Sabbath, the God of the high holy day, the God of the dietary law. This is what God was looking at, Jacob. Are you going to follow me? But you got to be careful when he give you these blessings. Go ahead. 13. He made him ride on the high places of the earth that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock and oil out of the flinty rock. Gave him the best. Go ahead. But of kind and milk of sheep with fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan and the goats with the fat of the kidneys of wheat. And thou didest drink the pure blood of the grape. I'm going to show you what the black folk you say about that when you're doing good. He living high off the what? Off the hog. Off the hog. Yeah. <laughs> but we don't want that in the right. hog today. Right. But J Jacob, which is Israelite, was number one, man. Everybody looked at us like they looking at the Gentiles now. We was in charge. But something happened to Jacob. He let that money go to his head, like a lot of us do. He let all the possession go to his head. Let's see what happened to him. Go ahead. 15. But Jeshurun waxed fat and kicked. Now, Jeshurun is another name for Israel. Wax fat and kick. What else? Thou art wax and fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook God, which made him, and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. He lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. He didn't care what Jesus was talking about once he got that bread. Once he got that house. Once he or she got that spouse, he ain't care no more. He's like, oh, I got what I need now. I ain't got to do all that no more. This is how we do now. This is us. Wax fat, real thick. We living good. But God listening to you, he looking at us and how we do certain things. What happened? Go ahead. 16, they provoked him. They provoked him to jealousy with strange gods. With abominations provoked they him to anger. God is not going to take your sop sloppy seconds. He's very jealous. Jealous. He's not going to take nobody over here, especially when he funding the party. He funding the whole party. He paying for everything. And you going to choose another God like Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, and you going to forsake the high holy day? Because, man, I can't deal with that. You provoke him to anger. Go ahead. 17. They sacrificed unto devils, not to God, to gods whom they knew not, to new gods that came newly up, whom your fathers feared not. You sacrificed to Santa Claus? And you told these lies to your kids like Jesus was born on December 25th talking about Jesus is the reason for the season. And he funding all this stuff. He paying for it and everything in your house. Wax fat. A lot of people have turned away from this truth, y'all, and they went back to the world because they couldn't separate themselves. I'm telling you, this is an individual thing here. Individual thing. You ain't about all your family members going to be there because some are going to come at different times and some might not never come. You better make sure you take care of you because hell is hot. Y'all been outside lately? Yes. See how hot it is out here? This is like a blizzard. In hell, well, right now, this is like a blizzard. You'll freeze to death once you get out of hell. You go in this 100-degree weather. But people don't see it that way. Go ahead, bro. 18. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and has forgotten God that formed thee. Who's that rock that led Israel out of the will? Jesus. Jesus. That's who you're talking about. Rock. That yes, rock sir. with Christ. First Corinthians chapter 10. Yes, go sir. ahead and look it up. Go ahead, bro. 19. And when the Lord saw it, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. So when the Lord did what? He saw it. Abhorred me. He hated it. Because he gave you the best, Israel. Gave you the best. All the jewelry. All the clothes. Because Egypt just made y'all. Y'all went out of Egypt with everything. But once you got in that wilderness, y'all went crazy. This our people. Go ahead, bro. Verse 20. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very forward generation. Children in whom is no faith. No faith. Oh, I mean, they're going to do what they mind say. I just feel. 
I just feel like that's wrong with you. You lean into your own and understand what the book is like. That's what you go with the book. Our feeling will confuse a lot of stuff, especially in this economic crisis right here. Well, I got to do this for my kids. Come on, Miss Jim. Well, I got to do this for the kids. Come on, Miss Sally. No, oh, man, you don't do that. You just, a lot of people like do some crazy stuff, just say, oh, I did it for the kids. No, you just suffer. God wants you to suffer for a minute. Oh, I just got to go break the Sabbath. Knowing you can take a lesser pay and get rid of that car. Get rid of that, that, uh, that, that bill you had. Get rid of all that stuff you had. Then you can make it. Pay your light bill and your rent. And eat a hot dog and be happy. You right, That's what people ain't want to do. Go ahead, bro. Verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with the foolish nation. People cannot take a pay cut. They can't take it. They can't take the pay cut. Oh, no, man, I got that truck. I ain't letting that truck go. I'm just going to open the shop up on the side and cut some hair and keep my truck. I would let that truck go. I'd be in my old white truck. It's still in the yard. Be driving up here. Man, forget this stuff. I ain't turning my back against God for nobody or no thing because I know he's jealous. He's very jealous. Go ahead, bro. 22. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn into the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and, and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. Read that again. For a fire is kindled in mine anger and shall burn into the lowest hell and shall consume the earth with her increase and set on fire the foundations of the mountains. So most people go into hell for a retirement check. Most here. people go into hell for a car in the house. Because this stuff right here, it's just like a vapor. It ain't going to last long. You're on this earth for 70 years. That's at best. Do you understand on the other side of each other how long that is? Time don't exist no more when you're in that lake burning. Time don't exist no more when you're in the kingdom praising God. This is what God trying to get us to understand. Man, it's just temporary right here. The hell is forever. Go ahead, bro. 23. I will heap mischiefs upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. Mm -hmm. They shall be burnt with hunger and devour with burning heat and with bitter destruction. I will also send the teeth of beasts upon them with the poison of serpents of the dust. All this happened when we was in the wilderness also. The teeth of beasts. Israel got bit by a serpent. God said, look, y'all hold a serpent up on the pole so you can be healed. And it's going to happen the same way again. The people that didn't get into the wilderness at our day. Go ahead, bro. 25. The sword without and terror within shall destroy both the young man and the virgin. The suckling also with the man of gray hairs. So, yeah, you got no gray hair. They don't care about you, bro. I got them, too. They don't care about you. They'll kill you. Because it's going to be every man and woman for themselves in that hour of trouble, that tribulation period. People do some strange things when they're hungry, man. When they hungry, used to having food, used to having it, they would go crazy. That's why I tell all y'all hear me saying it all the time. Put yourself through a little pain every, every day. Go hungry for a little while. Get in that sun. Go lock yourself up in the car. Don't That's stand right. there the whole time, but feel, feel this sun. Go out there and walk in the sun. Just feel it because if you ain't used to pain, you will quit automatically. Oh, I ain't dealing with that. What that mark ought to be? Put it here. God got to understand, I got kids. Man, that's the problem. He do understand. You ain't built for this. He can say, okay, go ahead. Go ahead, brother. 26. I said I would scatter them into corners. I would make the remembrance of them to cease from among men. Who's he talking about? Here? Israel. Scatter you in the corners. Where do we read that at? You know what chapter 28. He gonna pluck us off our land. This stuff ain't. This stuff been happening to us for a long time. It is gonna happen to us in the future. Yes, sir. Go ahead, bro. Twenty-seven. Were it not that I feared the wrath of the of the enemy, lest their adversaries should behave themselves strangely, and lest they should say, "Our hand is high, and the Lord have not done all this." <laughs> yeah, the Lord the one put it on you. Right. He the one told the adversary to get you because you ain't acting right, Israel. Mm -hmm. 
Go ahead, bro. 28. For they are a nation for the council. Neither is there any understanding in them. Ask them people about the law today. I don't want to hear about that. Jesus paid for it all. That's a whole consumption of the of, of Jesus everything. going to the crowd. Right. Oh, he paid for the Old Testament done away with, yeah. I said, bro, you better read that. New Testament, it refers back to the old. Right. Matthew chapter 24 said, told him, whosoever read the Daniel, let him understand. Right. So if you ain't got Daniel, you don't understand. That's the Old Testament. Go ahead, brother. 29. Oh, that they were wise, that they understood this, that they would consider that latter end. He's talking to us too today. Consider the latter end. Don't just get consumed over this little money, cars, clothes, whatever it is you got your lustful eyes on. Just get, make sure you understand the latter end. All that gonna go. Hopefully you don't go with it when it burn it. Hopefully I don't go with it. Right. I ain't leaving myself out because ain't nobody saved right now. Right. We just wait. Matthew chapter 24 said what? He, he that endured to, to win the, to the end, to the end same, shall same, be same. saved. Go ahead, bro. Verse 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand, two put ten thousand to flight, except their rock has sold them and the Lord has shut them up? Who, who did this? The Lord Jesus. He did this. He sold us in slavery. Why? Deuteronomy chapter 28 tells you because we broke the law. We turned away from it. He sent them white folks to get us on them slave ships. Can't nothing go by unless he allows it. So this economy, we got to make sure we don't end up in these positions. That's why I'm reading all this. Go ahead. 31. For their rock is not as our rock, even our enemies themselves both being judges. Mm, go ahead. For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall. Their clusters are bitter. We are here now. The vines, talking about the people, are like Sodom and Gomorrah. All this homosexuality going on today. It's in them. They forcing it on your kids through cartoon. I ain't never no author to be gay <laughs> on GPTV or whatever you want to call that. Yo, Cartoons and all yeah. this stuff. They had a gay choir talking about, no, nah, no, nah, we don't want y'all old head. We want your kids. They understand you target this small generation so they sort of the grow up in them. They going after them. Go ahead, bro. Verse 33. Their wine is the poison of dragons and the cruel venom of ass. This is the doctrine. Doctrine is poison because it's going to kill your kids if you let them get into this. Right. Go ahead. It's not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures. Mm. To me belong vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Your foot sliding. A lot of people got one foot in and one foot out. Yep. Mm -hmm. and you know what God said? You be lukewarm, He gonna spit you out His mouth. That's the hell. Don't let your feet slide. Slide your feet to the Sabbath. Slide your feet to the high holy day. Slide your feet to eating dietary law stuff righteous. Slide your feet to that. Yes, Don't slide back in this Christmas, this ham, this Easter, these eggs. Run around here with big old hats about the size of a TV on your head. In, in church, can't even see the pastor or the congregation. All this stuff we got going on. Crazy stuff. Right. Go ahead, bro. 36. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. Because we have one time, we ain't going to have no power, man. He's going to judge. Go ahead. And he shall say, where are their gods? Their rock in whom they trusted. Who you trusting me to? A lot of people trust them in their 401k plan. A lot of people trust them in their house. A lot of people trust them in their kids. A lot of people trust them in their wife, their husband. They trust them in a lot of things but the rock, which is Jesus. They ain't trusting in that. In this economy, this economic uh, hurricane of this kind, we're going to need God. We're going to need to trust him. Because a lot of people want to be whispering in your ear to make you make it itch. You can do this and you can do that. Oh, what do you, when I can do that? Oh, on a Saturday at 1 o'clock. No, I can't do that. I'm keeping the Sabbath. 
Go ahead, bro. 38, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. He said, all the ones you sacrificed for Christmas, Easter, and Thanksgiving, and they sacrificed, you let them rise up and help you. Because God is Proverbs chapter 1. He said, I'm going to laugh at your calamity. I'm going to laugh at you because you trusted in those things instead of me. Believe me, boy, you got a lot of fakers out here. A lot of fakers. Go ahead, bro. Verse 39. See, now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. But that's a bad man right there. Mm -hmm. I always look at that like John Wick. <laughs> he come get you, boy. The boogeyman, he scared of the boogeyman. The boogeyman scared of him. He said, can't nobody hide from me when I want to kill you. I'm the assassin above all assassins. I'm the greatest murderer in the world. I'm the greatest killer. I'm the greatest healer. I do it all. But people do not respect that because they fed them and they love fluffy baby Jesus. He said, I came as a babe. I'm going to come as a lion of Judah. And we know what lions do. They kill. Keep going. Verse 40. For I lift up my hand to heaven and say, I live forever. Yes, sir. Go ahead. If I wet my glittering sword and my hand take hold on judgment. Wait a minute. God got a sword? Yeah. Glittering. That means sharpen. Go ahead. I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. If you don't keep this law, you hate him. If you don't keep the high days, you hate him. If you despise not keeping the dietary law, you want to eat your shrimp, catfish, and all that stuff, you hate him. You know why you hate him? Because he wrote it. He wrote this council so we can be holy because he's holy. It's the economic system that we can survive in. We keep the book. And he will open your eyes. You'll see things that you ain't never seen before. It'll be right before your eyes. Right before your eyes. Go ahead. 40, 42. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood and my sword shall devour flesh and that with the blood of the slain of the captives from the beginning of revenge is upon the enemy. Go ahead. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants and will render vengeance to his adversaries and will be merciful to, unto his land and to his people. Don't worry, God going to deliver vengeance to his people. You just don't get yourself in trouble. By trying to take vengeance for yourself. Leave him alone. Let him have it. Walk away from it. Let's hit the last one. Let's go to Psalms 37. God ain't forgot about his people, man. We ain't got to beg for Jack. Don't never beg nobody for nothing. Never. Psalm 37. God, people don't beg. In verse 24. You survive in this economic crisis, this economic hurricane. And how do you survive? Knowledge first. So you know how to handle what he gives you. Without the knowledge, you're going to spin it up. You're going to use it up. And you ain't going to give him nothing. And I ain't, I'm talking about me too. I have, they have knowledge of it. Psalm 37 verse 24. God should them people ain't got to bed for nothing. Verse 24, go ahead. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Yes, sir. He upholded us with his hand. Cause we fall. Don't be going off on people because they did a little falling. Something happened in their life. Oh, they must have offended God. Oh, they must have did something. Some things got to be as it is. You don't know what that person have done to you. God trying to remove that person from you. A lot of times people don't understand that. But keep going. This is what I'm getting to about this begging. Go ahead. 25. I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He ain't seen the righteous forsaken. Or his seed. Y'all ever seen me beg for anything? Nothing. I ain't begging nobody for nothing. Ever since I ran into the truth, it's been okay. I've been ups and downs, but you ain't gonna catch me begging nobody for nothing. I know what I got, and you should know what you got. If a person don't want to be around you, you let them go. Because you bring in this book, you let them go. Family member, all of them. Don't beg for nothing. 
Go ahead, bro. 26. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. Yes, sir. Your children are blessed. Go ahead. Depart from evil and do good and dwell forevermore. See, I told you, you got to depart from evil. Evil. Because people doing evil around you, you want to make them happy? No, don't make them happy. Give them the book. Depart from evil. Get up. Get them off around you. Go ahead. 28. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever, but the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. So the Lord loveth judgment? Yes. So you telling people, look, man, don't do, don't eat that swine because you're going to go to hell. They said, stop judging me. You don't know if I'm going there. I said, if you don't stop, this is what's going to happen to you. I didn't judge it. The book judge it. He loved the judge, meaning that you read it to him right. and let the chips fall where they may. Go ahead, bro. 29. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. We're going to inherit the land. Israel going to be the headquarters of the whole world. Everybody going to come up to Jerusalem to worship with us. Go ahead. The mouth of the righteous speaking wisdom and his tongue talking of judgment. What's your mouth speaking? What my mouth speaking? If it's talking foolishness or judgment? That's up to you and I to decide. Go ahead. 31. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. We still going back to the law. When you got the law in your mouth, your, in your heart, meaning your mind, those steps ain't going to slide, meaning that you're not going to slide off from this. You might stumble and fall, but you're going to get right back up and say, oh, I know I can't do that no more. I got whooped pretty good, but you ain't going to slide away from it. At least I hope not. Go ahead. 32. The wicked watches the righteous and seek it to slay him. They're watching you now. They're watching. He's talking about Israel as a whole. You see all this stuff going on? They put abortion clinics in our neighborhoods. They got plan B and all on the shelf trying to kill all these unborn babies. Unborn babies. When that sperm go inside that woman, it's a baby there. It ain't let alone 13 weeks or two weeks or whatever. That's sperm there. You men are the ones who carry the babies before a woman carried the baby. I've been carrying them since I was 13 or whenever I started producing them. The woman is the one that just have the oven. She baking the baby. She a part of it, but you are the ones. So don't be out there spreading it all on everything besides getting into what it's supposed to get into. But go ahead. Verse 33, the Lord will not leave will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Lord, they're going to leave him in the hand, but we in the wicked hands for a minute. People get nothing up because they're in a little time of distress. No, no, just deal with it. Like, okay, let me see how to play out. Lord, he's trying to check and see if you're going to get frustrated and start shaking like a salt shaking and tell everything. You know how you get inside of a courtroom, you get inside with them lawyers talking to the police officer talking to you, and you start running your mouth. The first thing they tell you, shut your mouth. Don't say nothing until you get an appointed attorney. Our appointed attorney is Jesus. Shut your mouth. Get a, somebody who know what they're talking about first before you say anything that would incriminate you. And that's what we do now. We say all these things that would incriminate our soul because we feel like, Oh, man, it'll be okay. That's mom, that's dad, that's sis, that bro. No. Give him the book. Then your hands for a minute. Go ahead. 34. Wait on the Lord and keep his way, and he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Isn't that what Joseph did when he was in prison for 13 years? He waited. You know how long it is? 13 years in prison? He waited on that one time, that dream. And he became from the jailhouse to the penthouse, second in charge, zero to 100 real quick. Yes, sir. Go ahead. 35. I have seen the wicked in great power and spread in himself like a green bay tree. Yes, sir. Yet he passed away and lo, he was not. Yeah, I sought him, but he could not be found. We see the wicked right now in great power, but one day they ain't going to be found because God's going to break their rulership. And Israel going to be ruling then. Go ahead. 37. Mark the perfect man and behold the upright for the end of that man is peace. So you make sure you know who's the perfect man. This one man too. Man is just a species. Mark him. Like he, yeah, you go to him, you go to her for the truth. They're going to get you right. But if nobody ain't coming to you, 
You just dumb as a dough. No, you ain't showing God your, your knowledge, man. You ain't showing these people their knowledge. If they ain't coming to you for understanding this book, or you just blending in. A lot of we got a lot of blenders out here. Got a lot of blending in. You can't you can't tell they're a Christian. They're like, oh, he's a Christian. Everybody know I would crack that book up on you while I'm cutting the hair. I will open it up, but keep going. Verse 38. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. Mm. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. Yes, sir. The transgressor is going to be cut off. What they say? Enjoy pleasure for a season? This is a season right here of you enjoying this pleasure without the law. What's next? You're going to be cut off in the lake of fire? I'm going to be cut off in the lake of fire because we got to trust in the Lord and his process. We got to trust in it. Especially in this economic season. It's a bad season coming up. It's coming. We don't already experienced one. Go ahead, bro. Verse 40. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. They trust in who? The Lord. The Lord. The Lord. They ain't trusting their job. They ain't trusting their wife, their husband, their girlfriend, their boyfriend, their children, anybody, their mom, their... No, no, they trust in the Lord. I like to hit them real soft spot like family member call. People think this stuff don't happen in your household. Yes, it does. That's where it's going to start at. When you bring this truth, it's going to start right there in your house. Some going to fold and some going some gonna to sink, some going to swim. But you got to make sure when you know the truth, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. And I thank you for your time. Amen. We want to take up the offering. You got anything you want to give? You can put it in the um, offering bag. Y'all act like y'all want some more. Come on with it. Got nothing to do. <laughs> Come on with it. <laughs> I got to leave something for Pentecost. <laughs> We're going to get it in Pentecost too. Yes, sir. It's a good thing, man, to understand what you're doing. But y'all go check out that economic uh, hurricane for real. You got to check it out. You can go ahead and read the announcements. Announcements. Here at the House of Israel, we have a dress code. Men and boys, no tank tops, no flip flops, no shorts, no muscle shirts, no sagging pants, no hats, no ripped jeans. If the jeans are ripped without showing skin, they are okay. No slides. Women and girls, no slides, no tank tops, no halter tops, no low cut blouses, no leggings, no body suits, no ripped jeans, no cleavage showing, no bra straps showing, no short skirts or dresses. Be mindful of your dresses and skirts. Because when you sit down, they can come up and show your thighs. This can be a distraction from the lesson. There will be no cross-dressing. Men should not wear women clothing, nor women wearing men clothing. If this happens, you will be asked to leave until you can dress appropriately. Romans 12 and 1 reads, Present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Cell phones and tablets. If you're using one during the lesson, please make sure you are not on anything that isn't pertaining to the lesson, like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, etc. Baptism reminder. Also, if anyone needs prayer, please let Pastor Jeff know. Yes, sir. And we're going to read the checklist off for the um, Feast of Pente Pentecost. Just showing everybody what they're going to bring. Um, okay. Rotel dip, um, Courtney, chicken pasta salad, um, the Phillips family, barbecue beef smokers, the Phillips family, cheesecake um, bites, the Williams family, cheese and cracker tray, Williams Tram family, fruit tray, Williams family, chicken and barbecue, Mr. LC, wing tray, Junior, wing tray again, the Williams family, uh, angel eggs, um, the devil, like that. <laughs> <laughs> angel eggs, uh, Phillips, put devil up there. What I, I stand correct. I wrote that. I wrote <laughs> that. I stand correct. Uh, the Phillips family salad, Mr. LC, wings, Jeff, um, sandwiches, James. <clears throat> okay, well, that's good. Uh, see, we got another chick. I'm gonna bring something else, but I'm gonna bring. A lot more other things. But um, we're going to meet tomorrow at 2 o'clock.
And I'm gonna, we, tonight, I think we can get in the hotel and decorate around about nine o'clock, hopefully, because they got another party. But we're gonna meet tomorrow at two o'clock to bring in the Feast of Pentecost. All right, we're gonna stand and close out. We're gonna face Jerusalem this way. Waiting on Brother Corey, my man. Go ahead, Corey. Yes, sir. Our Father, which are in heaven. Our Father, which are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Who's the king? Jesus. Who's the king? Jesus. What is the whole duty of man? Fear God and keep his commandments. What is the whole duty of man? To fear God and keep his commandments. Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Thank That's you, Lord. good. Well, have that in, Seven. Yes, sir.